Hi viewers, I'm on a youth participant with the Breaking Sky Productions and in partnership with the Youth in Tech Incubator program. Today, we're here to have a fireside chat with our special guest, Dr. Jorge Wong, who is a licensed psychologist, a graduate trainer, and advocate in the AAPI and Latinx communities reducing the stigma of mental health. So due to COVID-19, we've come to rely on platforms like Zoom to communicate but over time, many have begun to experience Zoom burnout. Mm -hmm. So have you ever experienced Zoom burnout yourself and how would you describe it? Uh, Zoom burnout. Um, I try not to be on Zoom as much as I can, but sometimes you can't es uh, escape it because you have to be on it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I do know, I remind myself that, you know, this too will pass, will end at a certain point, and I don't need to be on Zoom all the time. I am I guess I'm old enough to feel that I don't need to be at all the gatherings. Uh, nothing is gonna be that unique that I'm gonna miss. <laughs> That's gonna change my life drastically. I can catch up later on. Um, I know that some young people uh, always wanna, oh, you know, you don't wanna miss out, you wanna be everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think that pressure of social media or social comparison makes people feel that, oh, I, I live a sucky life because everybody seems to be having fun. Mm -hmm. When in reality, we all think that the grass is always greener on the other side. And. Uh, <coughs> Not to bust your bubbles, but once some people get to the other side, say, oh, it's the same, or it's worse, or it's, or it's not as good as I always thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's lots of disappointment. So I can let things go, and I can then uh, also expect myself to do what I think is best for me, to you know take care of myself so that I don't get burned out all the time. Mm -hmm. And But when I'm in the meetings or something, now I try to be fully present. <laughs> I don't need to be at 20,000 meetings in one day because, um, you know, there's tons of other people who can be at the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, am I that important at the meeting? Some are, and some are not so much. So I think those who are not that important for me to be there, then I, I, I choose not to be there. So choosing a, a moderate way, level of uh, engagement, it, it's also good. Um, although some of the people are so zoomed out, but then I always go back to like, but you guys used to hang out on these platforms all the time. <laughs> we used to tell you, stop it. And he's like, no, no, it's okay. Uh, and now that it's really here, there's mm -hmm. no other option, right? There's only one option, just yeah. Zoom or uh, uh, Microsoft Team or Google Meet or whatever. Then now say, like, oh, people don't like it. So they see, you wanted it, now you got it, now you don't like it. <laughs> yeah. So it's moderation, it's really about moderation. Yeah. And I think um, getting out um, in, you know, in the neighborhood to do stuff, mm -hmm. volunteer, change up your, your weekly schedule, your daily schedule, really helps. Um, Visually or uh, attention span, you know, they, they will say like every, what, 50 minutes or an hour, take a few minutes, you know, don't look at the screen, get, go do something, take a break. And I think that's really, uh, is really good. So for us here, as we're working, the, one of the great advantages is there's not that many uh, cars here, so that one of the parking lots is blocked, so we can actually <laughs> get up and go and walk and come back yeah. and resume at work. And then it kind of gives you a kind of refresh where you're re-engaging what you were doing earlier, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so what would you say contribute to Zoom burnout and how does that like affect people mentally? <coughs> hmm, I'm sure I can answer that. So Zoom, we can't escape it right now, right? So everything's yes. virtual until <laughs> things go back to the old normal, although I don't think the old normal will come back. I think it's, it's what value you place on it, right? I think it's also about how much attention you want to pay on it. Um, but then the other question I also have is like, are people, when they're Zooming, are they really just paying attention to one meeting or are they playing with the phone? So now you're like divided attention, doing this, doing this, doing this. And most people, um, silly you, younger generation, I think, uh, think that you guys can multitask. <laughs> right? The brain does not work like that. The brain works on one after the other one. So what you guys are doing is that putting short attention span on one thing and then mm -hmm. jump to something else and jump to something else. And yes, you can maintain it a certain time when things are not so stressful because mm -hmm. the tasks are simple enough that you can do it. But I think the message given is that, you know, you can do it. You can always multitask. Uh, and sometimes you find as, you, as the tasks get more complicated, you have to think, you have to really concentrate. And that causes a lot of uh, energy burn in your brain, a lot of stress and concentrating focus. And that's not a good thing. So I always recommend folks to Get one thing, get it done, or set a certain time just to do one thing, and then to, and then sh take a break, shift, do something else. So at least you're putting a hundred percent of your focus and concentration and um, problem-solving strategies into one problem. Then you get that accomplished. Hopefully, you get a sense of oh, I did something. Not you know l uh, the whole thing, but something. You you're progressing, you're moving. So it's also about taking a relative. Um, 
uh, appraisals of what you've actually accomplished for today. You don't have to do 100% there, you can do like, you know, 50%, 25%. And as long as you set a, a timeline, it's mm -hmm. planned, it's more predictable. What people are most usually anxious and concerned or feel out of control is when they cannot predict the future. Mm -hmm. But then there's this full perception that you can control the future. So, but people feel that you have a sense of control, it's, it's better, it's more manageable. So by breaking things into doable portions gives you a sense of perceived control. But again, things happen. There are technical glitches. There are things that happen. So you need to take that into account and not beat yourself up too much about it. Example, I, I've been on a conference um, calls this, this past two days and tomorrow too, and there's glitches and people are like, oh my God, they all get them upset. I'm thinking, <laughs> chill. You know, it's like every time there's something, Technology is supposed to help us uh, make our life easier, but things happen. So mm -hmm. kind of roll with it, accept it, work with it. And those are kind of like the adversities that COVID has thrown in our lives. Like, you know, oh, it just changed our whole life. If people know how to adapt to it, they'll survive much better. They'll learn from it, and they know that they, they can do things well with COVID or well without COVID. Now you have choices, you have options, you have resources to deal with something like this in the near future. And I think that's how we build our resiliency, our resources, our internal resources, our emotional, cognitive, even behavioral flexibility mm -hmm. to deal with things that life throws up that are unexpected. See if that makes sense. Yes, that's, uh, that's very interesting. Um, so what methods are there um, that can aid those that are experiencing the Zoom right now? I think you've also <laughs> mentioned like time management and like um, setting like a schedule for yourself. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? That could I would say help? get out. <laughs> get out and, and well, I, I think you guys call it like a, what technology, a detox or something, like mm -hmm. shutting everything down. Yeah. It's okay. Things will be there when you come back. Things are not going to disappear. Uh, things don't happen that quickly. Uh, I think with the speed of technology, uh, many, many of us feel that things need to be done so much more. Mm -hmm. And then we end up busying ourselves so much to the point where we are so busy that nothing is really meaningful. Mm -hmm. As compared to, uh, as you see or, or learn about certain masters in particular arts or skills, they take the time, they focus, and it has a lot of meaning to what the finished product is. Mm -hmm. As compared to just getting something done, getting something done, there's no meaning to it. You just like mm -hmm. busy bee, just pumping it out. So it, I would say slow it down, choose less things, Try to appreciate the quality of what it is that you're doing rather than the quantity of what you're actually doing. Uh, and I think that can kind of give you a sense of pride, a little sense of uh, that, that you should create it and complete it something. There's mm -hmm. a sense of accomplishment, and that would be very helpful. Same thing with, with the Zoom. Um, like I said before, like you don't need to go to all Zoom meetings all the time. <laughs> you don't need to like, you know, get it together all the time. You need time to take care and, and recharge yourself so that you can be present. Because if you're burned out and you get on the Zoom call, you're no fun. You just you're just there. Yeah, <laughs> yes. You're not contributing. You say, oh yeah, she, she didn't say anything. But if you're present, I think people will feel it. it well, your your presence will radiate throughout the whole virtual call. And I think that's what the connections that we get when we're actually all together in person mm -hmm. that's really missing for many people when it's just like a a screen. So. Yeah. I think so. um, the the videos mm -hmm. thing has also been like. Um, the one with like human connect in uh, connection mm -hmm. because I know sometimes like in schools they don't require you to turn on your cameras so there's also like a whole lack of like human inter like mm -hmm. interactions yeah another thing too is also um, if you have already built a relationship in person mm -hmm. then it's easier to kind of be on zoom and feel that you belong or you're, you're part of the whole group there's a sense that we're together but if you don't know those people that well, then there's that whole distance, the yeah. alienation component, and it's not as uh, intimate. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, in that sense, it's always good to see, it's always good to hear other, what other people have to say. So if you can take the, the benefits of what the platform gives, I think that, you know you, you gain something out of it, rather than, ah, oh, he's boring to other people. <laughs> so I think, again, it's, it's about perspective. How do you mm. come into the whole situation? Uh, what is your mindset going into it? Mm -hmm. really makes you be better emotionally, psychologically, or even physiologically prepared to deal with it. Um, you're more accepting, embracing, rather than all frustrated, and that kind of builds a lot of your, your stress cortisol, and, and your body gets stressed out as compared to, like, yeah, this is just something, and, and go it. So there's some something says to those who are happy-go-lucky versus those who are very serious about certain mm. things. There are times that you should be serious, and there are times you should be goofy. So I, I, I believe in that, so. Yeah. 
I tend to be more goofy than serious, but when I need to be serious, then I, I become serious. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Wong. We hope that you found this chat informative and helpful. We do want to point out that there are resources available, whether it's for you or for somebody else that needs help. For more information, you can visit the following website for the County of Santa Clara's call Center for Behavioral Health Services. Thank you for watching.